I'm gonna make sure that my uh, VR is set to normal. Where some of the trees are six, seven, eight hundred years old. And it's from a completely different perspective, right? So not always can you find wildlife or expect wildlife to show up. So we're in the estuary, the tide's low right now, it's just starting to come back in. And way off there from where we are positioned is a, uh, a couple of pier logs that are kind of rotten and old, just around with barnacles at the bottom and there's a uh, little dug tree that's growing at the top of one probably from some birds and stuff planting those seeds and uh, with this telephoto lens you can get some really nice compression for telephoto landscape photography I'm a couple hundred meters of back away from it and the tree is way off at the far end uh, of the estuary there um, press up right up against the back side of what I'm photographing and since it's such a long telephoto I'm getting a uh, nice smooth um, blur in the background so we're out here along the estuary and uh, there's kingfishers, eagles, uh, there is um, some other wildlife like uh, seals. But I wanted to show you this over here. Take a look. So I'm on Vancouver Island and check out that. Look how cool that um, slate is. Uh, but you can see it all up through here. This, this is Vancouver Island through and through. back in the Jeep we're heading to our next location uh, we just left the estuary the estuary was was great low tide I uh, was hoping for some black bears uh, maybe in their cubs uh, or even the Roosevelt elk in that area uh, we did get some landscape shots uh, but we're moving on now to uh, really what I wanted to focus on which is uh, photography in the woods and not just any woods. These are old growth uh, groves where some of the trees are six, seven, eight hundred years old and they're giant. And you're looking at these huge, huge, huge plants and you're thinking, okay, how do I, how do I photograph this? Do you use a wide angle? Do I get close, far away, that sort of thing. So what's difficult is the woods are quite dark and if you got some sky or some sun coming through, uh, lighting up any of the forest floor up against some trees and bushes, you're going to get some ho uh, hot spots. So the challenge today is to set up, get down in the forest, show you these magnificent uh, trees, and we're going to learn how to photograph them.
brought the macro lens. Because I think some of these shots would be just epic. Because look at the bark and that red cedar. Some of it's got like purple hues. Look, you got some blues, some reds, and kind of a dark purple and magenta. It's, it's stunning. It's beautiful. And so here we are on the west coast of Vancouver Island where it's known for these huge trees and uh, it's a perfect day so it's cloudy which gives us this nice soft light everywhere but there's still a lot of challenges here in the woods one is you got really dark shadow especially in the roots so darkness and then up at the sky is very very bright from the sky uh, so with extreme contrast like that we're gonna have a hard time balancing out the image so one we don't get hot spots or extreme dark zones uh, but at the same time not creating a crazy HDR um, look so it looks fake another thing is how do you shoot something this big do you stand close to it and point up we're gonna get a lot of distortion with a wide angle lens looking up. Maybe we want that, uh, but my personal favorite is actually going around the perimeter and, and zooming in. You don't have to really get the whole height of the tree to know that it's a big tree. I mean, just look at the, the diameter of this tree. If you just had a square shot of the base of it and how wide it is, especially up against a person or a human, whether it's myself in this shot or uh, my video camera lady. This is my wife. Hey, come and say hello. Hi. Just the two of us out for a hike in the woods. The trees over there which is where we first went uh, to take a look at it close up. Now the, the shot that I want to do is further back and let's first take a look at what gear I have. So I have a wide angle, 14 to 24, which we can do a little bit later closer up, but I want to get this telephoto lens out. This is a 70 to 200. I am going to shoot through the bushes. I'm going to frame the giant tree in with other trees that are smaller, uh, but it's it's not about them. They're going to be framing in the giant tree uh, that I want, which is the whole show, right? So the idea with the telephoto is to create some compression. So there's the force behind the tree there's the forest in front and especially uh, these um, bushes and leaves to create bouquet around the tree and the idea is uh, in this in this woods uh, everything is chaotic we got trees and branches and bushes everywhere so we're going to try and simplify it with creating a short depth of field by using a telephoto zoom compressing and capturing that giant trunk, not the whole top thing, but the giant trunk uh, in amongst this chaos. And this is how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna first set up my composition, see what I'm looking at. And ooh, look at this right out of the gate. I wanna take some macro shots, so I've got my 105 2.8 macro lens portrait and macro lens so this one's great if you want to take pictures of people uh, but here i want to use it for macro and where i'm shooting is all of this new uh, moss that's growing on this cedar bark and the bark is really cool and so you got greens against dark reds and purples so I'm gonna get nice and close. Now the thing is with macro, um, one is I changed my uh, focus to single point. I don't know if you can see that on my lens. Single point 
and it's spot focus. And what that means is that when I'm, uh, you could probably see in live mode, is where the spot is, or more importantly through the viewfinder, wherever that's lined up and I push the focus button, it's only going to focus on that little spot. Whereas there's other um, focusing modes like 3D or continuous that if it was an animal running through, when I focused on it, it would track it and move it. Now here I don't want, you know, a 52 point focus because whatever's closest to the sensor, whatever it thinks, you know, I want it focused, it'll jump to that and it'll focus. Whereas here I have complete control over one little spot and I can focus on it. So that's important, I switch it to that. Uh, the second thing is depth of field. So with anything, the closer you are, the shallower the depth of field you are. And then I'm also shooting at 105 millimeters, which is actually kind of a zoom uh, if you think about it. So getting really close to a subject and using a longer focal length will cut down my depth of field to like fractions of a millimeter, right? So instead of using a really wide aperture, uh, so my depth of field is really, really small. I'm going up in f-stops to say f11 so that I can create a wider depth of field. And even then, shooting something as small as this moss will only be maybe a centimeter uh, when I'm shooting. Now if it gets so narrow and I have time, I might set up the tripod and take multiple shots where the depth of field slowly changes and then I compress them together in uh, Photoshop so that I have a nice wider depth of field. From this angle, I'm actually shooting square on. Now this root here has a curve to it, but my the plane of focus uh, is, is right here that I'm, I'm getting in focus and I like it that it, it falls away, away from um, my focal plane so that it blurs and I'm doing a vertical because I really like these lines and what I have here is something just like that where it's really nice uh, the things that are in the center are nice and focused and to be honest on the sides here I'm not far away away from the edge of this this rounded root that it falls into a, a depth of field that kind of leave confusion I guess in the image so it's cool I can shoot square on I have a little bit more control whereas if I shoot from the side things fall away from the lens so fast that you might miss your focus there's a couple of different compositions you can get one I like staying straight on but there's also from the side and there's a couple of things you can ask yourself do I want a bouquet of green behind me or do I want kind of this red earth and, and all of these sticks and branches? So you're gonna get a completely different uh, palette of color when you mix different background elements in your scene. And to be honest, I like a green background because here close onto the trunk, I got more reds than I do greens. So having a balance of the green in the background kind of work out. Hey guys, welcome. This is a few more giant trees in this beautiful grove here. And uh, we got a boardwalk that we can walk on. Beautiful cedar cuts and shakes for us to walk on. Anyways, we're gonna take some uh, more photos here. Uh, I'm shooting right now with the 24 to 70. It's kind of a mid range, not super wide angle, but I can zoom in to get a little bit more of a tight shot. I did bring my drone and I think we're gonna have a little bit of fun because if you uh, look around, uh, it's, it's kind of clear in this area. 
there's a lot of smaller trees that either they got pushed down by the wind or they haven't grown up because there's not as much sunlight down in here. There's some great shots here. And what I'm doing with my 24 to 70 is, is zooming in just enough to kind of compress. And I'm getting this big tree with that big tree. And there's no sky at all in this image. It's just nothing but forest. And I, again, I don't need to see up top um, to get the size really uh, shown in a, in a photograph. And then to really top it off for uh, perspective, it's just you get a hiker in there, or a person standing up against these trees, and really it shows the scale and the size of these monsters. Now, we don't have any fog here, but I think if there was a layer of fog moving through the forest, that would give another sort of rainforest dynamic. Uh, that we're not getting here. It is wet, uh, which is which is great. We're in a rainforest. We want to show it. But I think if there's fog, I would be doing more wide angle and kind of showing the tops of the trees kind of disappearing into the clouds, into the fog. All right, we're going to take off. As you can see here from my video camera, it's a nice, dark, lush forest, and it's from a completely different perspective, right? I'm shooting raw, and I'm going to change the brightness. It wants it to bright, brighten up because of how dark these trees are. But I'm actually going to darken it down because I like darker shots than overexposed. And we're going to roll this down a tiny bit. great being back thank you so much for watching uh, if you have any questions uh, let me know in the comments down below I want to know how you guys photograph in the woods uh, or do you do something different than I do um, yeah I'd love to hear more about that if you like waterfalls and you want to learn how to shoot waterfalls I got a video up here on the left hand screen uh, click on that if you want to see more content like this Hit the subscribe and if you love this video, hit the thumbs up. Thank you so much for, for watching. I'm gonna take a nap.